Hello everyone. On this video we will be going over the principal unit normal vector and the binormal vector. Okay. So if you remember just a regular real valued function for real valued functions let's say for example y equals 2x plus 3 there are an infinite number of perpendicular functions or functions perpendicular to it. Okay, so remember for a real value linear function, for another function to be perpendicular to it, the slope has to be a negative reciprocal. So you have y equals negative one half x as your slope. Now, the reason there are infinite number of functions perpendicular to it is because you can have that plus c as long as c does not equal 3. Okay, so you have an infinite number of perpendicular lines to this real valued function. Okay, so the thing is with vectors, it kind of works the same way. So there are, I will say almost an infinite number because I don't want to attach myself to infinite. Infinite number of vectors that are orthogonal. And remember, orthogonal is just another way to say perpendicular to other vectors. Okay, now for us, we're going to look closely at the vector of our unit tangent vector. Okay, so to do that, we're going to go back to our properties of the dot product. So we know that by the properties of the dot product that a vector, the dot product of a vector in itself equals a constant, then the dot product of that vector and its derivative is going to equal zero. Okay, but what if instead of a constant, we just made that equal to one? Okay, same rules still apply. One is a constant, and that would still happen. All right, so if we normalize the derivative gives us the special vector called our principal unit vector. Or principal unit normal vector. Okay. Now that's the entire name. You might see it called the just the normal vector or the unit normal vector, but that's the entire name. So shortcuts of course are going to come along.
Okay, so the formula for our principal unit vector, or just our normal vector, I'll probably just call it that from now on, really has the same ideal as our regular unit vector. So remember our unit vector is equal to some vector a divided by the magnitude of that vector a. Okay, so that's just our plain, ordinary, everyday unit vector. And we know that as a magnitude, which is just another way to say length, of 1 and is in the same direction as our a vector. So that's the one thing we know about our unit vector. It has the same magnitude of 1 and in the same direction as our vector a. All right. So that leads us to our definition. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next page. Okay, so what if we let C be a smooth curve and our R vector represents a vector on an open interval that we will call I. So as long as the derivative of our tangent vector doesn't equal zero, then the principal unit vector principal unit normal vector at some value t is defined by our principal unit or our normal vector. I'll just call it that instead of saying the whole name. So our normal vector is equal to the derivative of our tangent vector over the magnitude of that derivative. So the formula is pretty close to the same as our unit vector. The only difference is we're applying the derivative of our tangent vector. Okay, so let's take a look at what our normal vector will give us. Okay, so if you're trying to visually see what happens here. Okay, so let's see if we have our x, y, and z axes. x, y, and z. Okay, so let's say we have some curve in three-dimensional space. So that curve kind of floats around there. It's just kind of floating in the air. Okay, and let's say this is our vector that we'll call r of t. And our tangent vector will look like this. Okay, so that's our t. T. Okay, so that's our tangent vector right at that point. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of zoom in on that and move this down here. All right, so let's say moving that up. Just that little portion of the curve. And this is our tangent vector. Then our normal vector would be orthogonal to it. So this is our normal vector. Okay. Now it doesn't matter where our tangent vector is. Let's say this is our tangent vector. Then our normal vector would be 
here. Okay. Now the reason there are almost an infinite number of normal vectors to our tangent vector is because if you rotate this normal vector around that tangent vector, each one of those will provide a normal vector. So you have an infinite number of options as long as it's revolving around that tangent vector. All right, so that's kind of the visual version of our definition. If you are writing, feel free to press pause, but we're gonna go ahead and go to our first example. All right, so for example, let's say for the vector r of t equals t one half t squared and t squared for problem a you want to find the unit tangent vector and the unit normal vector And for problem B, oops, we're going to use our curvature formula, which is the magnitude of our tangent vector prime over the magnitude of our original vector prime to find the curvature. Okay. So just a heads up, this problem is kind of lengthy to solve, so you may want to start on a fresh sheet. All right, so starting on problem A, we have our R vector is equal to T one half T squared T. So that means our derivative of that r vector is equal to 1 t and 2 t, since the derivative of each of those components. Okay, so that means the magnitude of that derivative is equal to the square root of 1 squared plus t squared plus 2 t squared. 1 squared plus t squared plus 2t squared, which is equal to the square root of 1 plus 5t squared. Okay, so we have our magnitude. Okay, so we can use that to find our tangent vector. Okay, so our tangent vector is equal to r prime over the magnitude of r prime, which is equal to, instead of putting our vector up top, well, the vector here, that's our r prime. Instead of putting that up top, I'm just going to kind of move it to the side. So we're going to have 1 over the magnitude of r prime, which is the square root of 1 plus 5t squared times our r prime of t, which is 1t, 2t. All right, so this is our unit tangent vector. there. Okay, so now we have to find our normal vector, which means we need the derivative of this. Let's kind of separate that a little bit. So it's not all running together. Okay, so the derivative 
going to equal. And the reason I put it this way is because if you have it on top, then you're going to use the quotient rule for derivative. But I'm, I find the product rule a lot easier. So if they're next to each other, you can just use the product rule. All right. So you have the first times derivative of the second. So you have 1 over the square root of 1 plus 5t squared times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of each component is 0, 1, and 2. Plus the second, we have 1t, 2t, times the derivative of the first, which comes out to be negative 5t over the square root, well, I'll rewrite it as 1 plus 5t squared to the 3 over 2 power. or basically the square root of it cubed. All right, so if we go ahead and distribute those, it will equal zero times one over square root of five plus t squared, well, five t squared is equal to zero. So that doesn't really change. Okay. Now this times 1 is just our value, so you have 1 over the square root of 1 plus 5t squared. Now this times 2 is just 2 over the square root of 1 plus 5t squared. Okay. So now that's plus, distributing this will give us negative 5t over 1 plus 5t squared to the 3 half power. Distributing this, we have us negative 5t squared over 1 plus 5t squared to the 3 half power. And last but not least, distributing this will give us negative 10t squared. over 1 plus 5t squared to the 3 half power. Ooh, that was close. All right, so now when we add our vectors, we add our first components, our second components, and our third components. But we can't do that until our denominators match. Okay. So now what we have to do is, well, if you remember, the square root of 1 plus 5t squared, if you square that whole thing, you just get 1 plus 5t squared. So that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to multiply each of these by 1 plus 5t squared over 1 plus 5t squared. Okay, so we have... We multiply anything by that zero is just going to be zero. Okay, so we multiply this by 1 plus 5t squared over 1 plus 5t squared. We just get 1 plus 5t squared over, and I'm just going to rewrite it because now it would match this one. But I'm going to write that as a square root of 1 plus 5t squared the third power. So I'm just rewriting this as this. Times 2 over, well, 2 times 1 plus 5t squared. Let me move that over a little bit because I don't want to waste any space since this is a pretty lengthy problem here. All right, so we have 2 times 1 plus 5t squared over the square root of 1 plus 5t squared to the third power. All right, so that's plus 
and everything in this vector stays the same. Okay, so that's negative 5t over, the only difference is we're rewriting it this way. So you have the square root of 1 plus 5t squared to the third power. You have negative 5t squared over the square root of 1 plus 5t squared to the third power. And we have negative 10 t squared all over the square root of 1 plus 5 t squared to the third power. Okay, so everything there stays the same. So now we just go ahead and add, add, add. Okay, so that means our t prime of t is equal to, I'm just going to factor out the like denominator. So you have 1 over, let's say, the square root of 1 plus 5t squared to the third power. Okay, so factoring out all the like denominators, we add these together, you have 0 plus negative 5t is just negative 5t. So 1 plus 5t squared plus negative 5t squared is just 1. And if we distribute that, you have 2 plus 10t squared minus 10t squared is just 2. All right. So we have our derivative. So now all we have to do is find the magnitude of that derivative. So the magnitude, let me move that up a little bit, of our derivative of our tangent vector is going to equal, and if you wanted to, you could put that right on top. It doesn't matter at all. It's completely up to you. Let me move this down just a smidgen. We can always finish up on the next page, so I'll move this down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so the magnitude of our derivative, that's going to equal, again, if you wanted to move that up top, you could, but it will be the square root of negative 5t squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared all over the square root of 1, well that's the square root actually of 1 plus 5t squared, so i got to put that, actually instead of doing that, well I guess I could still do it that way, so that's the square root of 1 plus 5t squared to the third power, and that entire thing is going to be squared. Okay. Now, if you wrote it as a linear combination, it would be negative 5ti over this plus 1 over this plus 2 over this, and then you would square each individual one and then square root them as you add them together. So that's why this is square rooted and squared. All right, so this is just going to equal square root of 25t squared plus 1 plus 4, so that's plus 5, over this square and square root cancel each other out. So we're right back to the square root of 1 plus 5t squared to the third power. All right, so we're getting closer and closer to our answer. So we're going to continue this on the next page. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and finish up. As a matter of fact, let me write down where we 
left off. So the magnitude of our derivative is equal to square root of 25t squared plus 5 over the square root of 1 plus 5t squared to the third power. All right. Okay. Now, what we're going to what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. No, we don't really have to. We can leave it like that. But first, we're going to factor 5 out of both of those terms, which will give us square root of 5 times the square root of 5t squared plus 1 over the square root of 1 plus 5t squared to the third power. Okay, now if you see here, this is the same as this one, so this cancels out with one of those. So that now becomes squared. So we end up with square root of 5 over the square root of 1 plus 5t squared squared is just 1 plus 5t squared. Okay, so we're not done. We just found the magnitude of our tangent vector squared. Okay, so that leads us to having everything we need to find our normal vector. Okay, which is our tangent vector prime over the magnitude of our tangent vector prime. Okay. So going back to our previous sheet, you can see where our unit tangent vector is. You have one oh, unit tangent vector. Ah, our t prime of t. There we go. That's the one we're looking for. And I got lost in the shuffle there. You have negative 5t, 1, 2 over the square root of 1 plus 5t squared to the third power. Okay, so our t prime of t is negative 5t, 1, 2 over 1 plus 5t squared to the 3 half power times or divided by we divide it by the magnitude, then we can just multiply it by the reciprocal. So that's times our square root of 5 down there, and 1 plus 5t squared. Okay, so if we did decide to write this as negative 5t, 1, 2 over the square root of 1 plus 5t squared to the say, third power. And 1 plus 5t squared. Remember, 1 plus 5t squared is just the square root of that squared. So you can actually rewrite it. Let me clear that up a little bit for you. Over square root of 5. Because remember, that square and square root will cancel out. So you'll end up right back here. And the only reason I did that is because this will cancel out with two of those, which leaves you with just one square rooted value. Okay, so we end up with negative 5t, 1, 2 times 1 over square root of 5 times the square root of 1 plus 5t squared. 
which takes us right back to negative 5t12 over square root of 25 t squared plus 5. Okay, so you can write the answer actually either way. Okay, so that would be your normal vector. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're going to go ahead and go over our binormal vector. Okay, so... Okay, so for our binormal vector, okay, if you remember, if you have some vector A and vector B, the cross product of that is orthogonal to both A and B. Okay, so that idea leads to our binormal vector. So for our binormal vector, which we'll call B of T, that's equal to the cross product of our tangent vector, our unit tangent vector, and our normal vector. So that would mean that our binormal vector is orthogonal to both our tangent vector and our normal vector. Okay, so just to kind of remind you how we would find the binormal vector if our tangent vector is equal to, let's say, some f of t, g of t, and h of t, and our normal vector is equal to, let's say, some alpha t, some beta t, and some gamma of t. Or you can use a, b, c if you want to. It doesn't matter. I just kind of threw those in so they wouldn't get mixed up in any way. Then our binormal vector is equal to, remember, Move that up a little bit. Our little matrix application. So if you put your I, your J, your K, you have your F of T, G of T, H of T, and you have your alpha of T, your beta of T, and your gamma of T. All right. So that's how you would find your binormal theorem. I mean binormal binormal vector. Sorry about that. Alright, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause. But we're gonna go ahead and jump into our example. Alright, so for example, what if we wanted to find our tangent vector, our normal vector, and our binormal vector 
for the vector r of t is equal to cosine of t times the i vector plus sine of t times the j vector plus k vector at t equals pi over 4. All right. So getting started on this one, first thing we have to do is find the derivative of our original vector. So our prime of that vector, derivative of cosine is negative sine, so you have negative sine t times your i vector. And der derivative of sine is cosine, so plus cosine of t times our j vector, and the derivative of 1 is 0, so that really disappears. Okay, so our tangent vector, remember that's our prime over the magnitude of our prime. And I'll separate that a little bit. Okay, so that's going to equal negative sine of t times the i vector plus cosine of t times the j vector over the square root of each of those components squared. So you have negative sine of t squared plus cosine of t squared. Okay, now sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So square root of 1 is just 1, so we end up with negative sine of t i plus cosine of t times your j vector. All right. Now to find our tangent vector at pi over 4, tangent vector of pi over 4 is just equal to negative sine of pi over 4 times your i vector plus cosine of pi over 4 times your j vector. Okay, so that's going to equal square root of 2 over 2 times your i vector plus square root of 2 over 2 times your j vector. Oh, I got my negative there. So that is going to equal, if you factor out the square root of 2 over 2, negative i vector plus j vector. Okay, so we found our tangent vector at pi over 4. Now we're going to find our normal vector. Okay, so first we need the derivative of our tangent vector. Okay, so t prime of t, that's equal to the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine of t times the i vector. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so that's minus sine of t times your j vector. Okay, so we know that our normal vector, oops, sorry about that. I keep trying to remember to look up and pull the paper down when I'm in the zone of writing. Okay, so our normal vector is t prime over the magnitude of t prime. Bring that up a little bit more in case I get engulfed in my math and forget to look at the screen. Okay, so that is equal to our t prime, negative cosine of t times the i vector minus sine of t times the j vector all over the square root of negative cosine of t 
squared plus negative sine of t squared. Okay, so that's actually equal to negative cosine of t sine of t since this again is equal to 1. Okay, so it's negative cosine of t times the i vector minus sine of t and there we go times the j vector. Okay, so now, once again, we have to find our normal vector at pi over 4. Okay, so that means that your normal vector at pi over 4 is equal to negative cosine pi over 4 times our i vector minus uh -oh, sine pi over 4. times your j vector. Okay, so that equals negative square root of 2 over 2 times the i vector minus square root of 2 over 2 times the j vector. Or if you want to factor that out, you can have negative square root of 2 over 2 times i plus j vector. Okay, so that's our normal vector at pi over 4. Alright, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause because we're going to continue this on the next page since we're pretty much running out of room here. Right. Okay, so to continue, we're solving for our binormal vector, which of course is our tangent vector and the cross product of our normal vector. Okay, so going back to the previous sheet. That means our where, where, where is it? Ah, our tangent vector is negative sine t and cosine of t. So remember, you have your i, give it some space, your j, and your k. All right, so. That gives us negative sine of t. You have cosine of t. And then remember, you have, it's 3D, so you have a k. So in this one, your k is actually equal to 0. All right. And same thing with your normal vector. We know that that is negative cosine of t minus sine of t. So you have negative cosine of t minus sine of t. And again, that k is 0. We'll put that away. Okay. So if you remember how to do the 3 by 3 matrix here, If you cover up the i column, okay, and if you'd like, you can cover up the j's also. That leaves you with cosine of t minus sine of t, 0, 0. Okay. So you have cosine of t minus sine of t, 0, 0, times i vector plus you cover up the j column 
and you can cover that up if you like. You don't have to. You have negative sine of t, negative cosine of t, zero, zero. Negative sine of t, negative cosine of t, zero, zero. And that's times your j vector. Plus, cover up the k. And again, if you like, you can cover these up also. You have negative sine, negative cosine, cosine, negative sine. Okay, so negative sine, negative cosine, cosine, negative sine. Okay, so we have our two by two matrices. You have our determinant, which is cosine of t times zero, which is zero, minus negative sine of t times zero, which is zero. So you have zero minus zero times your i vector, plus negative sine of t times zero is zero, and negative cosine of t times zero is zero. So you have that times your j vector plus you have negative sine of t times negative sine of t minus cosine of t times negative cosine of t. And all of that times your k vector. Okay, so we end up with that disappears and that disappears. So negative and negative is positive, so you have sine t squared minus negative, so that's plus, so you have co plus cosine squared of t, and all of that times your k vector. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So your answer is just 1 times k or just k. Nope. So your binormal vector is just equal to k. All right. So hopefully this made sense. And I will see you on the next video.